Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorr, and in today's video, let me discuss visual typing, let me discuss the important limits of visual typing. So often, people broadcast themselves as being able to know a person based on how they express themselves and based on their facial features, and so often this is simply stereotyping, physiognomy, and pseudoscience. The only thing you can do with visual typing, and the only scientific way to use visual typing, is to read a person's emotions and expressions and how their body language affects their present self and their self-expression. When you use visual typing, you want to use it to read how a person expresses emotions and how they convey themselves. It's simply like learning to analyze another person, what another person is saying on the visual or the gesture-based level, because our expressions and our gestures speak as much as our voice and what we say in practice. Our voice alerts other people to how we feel, how we think, and uh, how we are doing, what subtype we are in, what state we are in. So what I do with visual typing is um, I try to use it simply to read a person's present expressions. I try to use it to identify uh, common visual cues of uh, different cognitive processes. I try to correlate and see if there are connections between different thought processes and uh, how you gesture and can express yourself. And I don't think that claim is strange, because uh, if you think differently, that also affects how you express yourself to other people. If you have different interests and different ways to use and engage in cognitive processes, that means uh, you will express that on in your body language. Uh, it's just another part of your processing. You use your hands to process just as much as you use your mind to process. Uh, it all contributes to what you're trying to tell other people, how you're trying to affect other people. And you can use it to get a clue into how another person is feeling and how they are doing. You can get, use it to get a clue into their present self and their persona, their stage persona, or how they are in a group. We can use body language to read if another person is feeling more timid or scared compared to if they are having more dominant gestures. And you can use it to uh, get a clue into what another person is trying to do. So, I mentioned that uh, each cognitive function has different visual signals. I would argue that introverted intuitives who use intuition and judging have a more sly or scheming way of expressing themselves. A tensing around the nose region, causing them to look more like they have a hidden plan or agenda that they're trying to enforce in the world. This, uh, a use of these muscles making your eyes look more focused, like you're looking at something in specific rather than looking with an open and adaptable mind. Uh, the judging type wants to get specific information. They want they have they have a focus uh, that they're using to engage with the world. So it's not strange that this focus comes across in the eyes. And it's not strange that for the perceiving type, this focus is non-existent. It's more about having that free flow adaptive ability to engage the world and study it. Study it uh, op with an open mind, open to whatever could emerge, uh, ready to adapt to new options and opportunities. Similarly, when you look at uh, judging, you can also understand that this causes a difference in how you speak and articulate yourself. It's not strange to think that a judging type who is more interested in influencing their environment uh, compared to a perceiving type who is more interested in showing and comparing and contrasting information with other people uh, will have a difference in how they express themselves. When you're engaging in perceiving, it's so much more about how you go like, uh, what's happening? Like, it's more about that when you use your uh, outer parts of the yaw uh, to get a, a grasp of something, when you're trying to analyze something, when you're trying to process something that you just experienced. Someone maybe told you something and you got shocked about it. Someone, uh, something happened. That, uh, there's a difference between uh, the perceiver who is more interested in the analysis or the listening to another person and to processing the message that you received compared to the judging process, which is much more about conveying a message, expressing yourself and articulating something that will have an impact on your environment. The judging type seeks to have an impact on the world, and so they use more of their chic muscles. They articulate more what they say, because they are much more about articulation than processing of information. Perceiving, on the other hand, is so much more about uh, taking a break 
mid-sentence to think about what you just said, to analyze its merits, to analyze if, what it means, to get a grasp of it, to put something out there and to see it and to twist it and turn it. That's the perceiving process. It's all about like learning to master these things, learning to notice these patterns, and also noticing that every person is capable of e each and one, every one of these gestures. But that if you know these differences, you can have a clue to when you're engaging in judging and when you're engaging in perceiving. You can get a clue into how you engage in these processes. Like you can notice if you are tensing up these muscles while you use them, uh, or if you have a relaxed way of engaging in them. The intuitive judging type, of course, having more relaxed uh, gaze around the world. Studying something, but not something specific. Uh, not something uh, physical, but more like an idea or a thought or a possibility. Contrasting and seeing, does that make sense? What do I want with this? Where the sensing and judging process is so much more about contrasting information. Is that true? How can that be? Like, how can that make sense? Uh, there is a difference uh, in the sense that the interests are different. The intuitive types have different interests than sensing types. And when we use the sensing processes to understand the world, well, we look at the world differently than when we use the intuitive processes. The intuitive processes have, of course, their connotations to creativity, to theoretical thinking, to opportunities, to abstract thoughts, to possibilities, to things that have yet to happen. So often, it's also true that often uh, intuitive types study the world in a, with a more flexible, intuitive mind, uh, where sensors are much more based on reality. Still, what you want to avoid is getting confused by that outward persona, because you can learn to develop yourself to be in any kind of person. You have your base flow type, you have your base uh, set, of, set of drives, the things that give you energy, meaning, inspiration in your life, that's your personality type. Uh, but you still have the opportunity to choose to act in any way you please. You can choose to be a sensor as an intuitive. You can choose to be a thinker as a feeling type. But what you do then is you go out of your flow. You go out of your baseline interests, your baseline core idea of what is meaningful, what's important, what's positive. When you do, your visual expressions change, your face expressions change. Uh, often, I would agree, argue that uh, this causes a loss of energy. Uh, the person who does this becomes a lot less energized, a lot less active. Uh, similarly, the intuitive going into sensing gets into a passive mindset. They become more constrained on information, less likely to change their minds upon given, being given new information. Uh, and similarly, the sensor going into intuition also becomes less open to other people's perspectives and viewpoints. Going into the different processes, you are going to notice effects on your personality. Uh, for example, you can go from having this active learning mindset. You can go from having this sense of responsibility and what's important and what's meaningful to you to states that are less guided by this. You can go into mindsets that uh, allow you to work on things that you don't find important, that you don't find meaningful. Uh, or you can engage in courses or missions uh, that uh, uh, make you narrow-minded, that make you less likely to change your mind, less likely to change your focus. And that's reversing your personality type. And uh, then that's also why we get so confused typing celebrity figures, because we're going to meet a lot of celebrity figures that are going to have uh, reversed personality types. You're going to meet people uh, that are unhealthy, that are more stressed, that are more focused on engaging life as a sense of work or a sense of duty or an obligation or a chore or a distraction. And uh, you're going to have people that engage the world with curiosity, with an open mindset, with an awareness and an ability to change yourself upon being given new information. And so uh, often people are so led to mistyping people and saying, oh, uh, people who have passive mindsets are always sensors or people who are always focused on work and who never can have fun, they're always thinkers. And that's uh, so far off. That's so far off of re reality. And um, I think that's also why we need 
uh, and why there is a point to learning visual typing. Uh, possibly there's a chance that we can see how a person is at their best. But possibly there's a chance that we can note this and not just another person's con uh, const, uh, current expression or how they've learned to express themselves or what functions they've learned to develop. But possibly we can also note this when a person is visibly distressed, stressed or anxious. Possibly we can get a, cue into, a clue into how a person is feeling, how, what state they're in, how they're doing and how they're feeling. And perhaps that can teach us more about people than what regular personality psychology would. Perhaps that can explain the psychology of people who we know are bad people, criminals, people who have uh, hurt others, people who are narcissistic. Perhaps uh, visual typing can give us a clue into that and also help us uh, see past a uh, person's uh, self-assessment because you know, you know when you're answering a self-assessment test that there's a possibility that people lie. There's a possibility that people uh, change their answers to fit with their self-image rather than how they really feel. So perhaps visual typing can give us clues there. But no matter what, make sure that you don't use visual typing to stereotype a person or to categorize them into a set of behaviors. Make sure you see people as diverse and open to change. Make sure you note this, that people are flexible and that how they look in one video footage that can change if you look at another footage from another time, another day, another year. Have that open mind and don't fall into uh, flat uh, uh, pseudoscience or into uh, stereotypes. Uh, that's my recommendation if you want to engage in visual typing. I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did leave a like, share and subscribe and I hope to see you guys in the next video.